everybody's favorite topic to talk about these days, The Last of Us 2. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Everybody loves that game. <laughs> what? Wait, what's The Last of Us 2? Hey, I'm Fingers. Yo, this is Vector. Hey, everyone. This is Days Ahead. And I'm Nitroid. You're listening to the Kojima Frequency. Who who's played it? Who's played it? I am currently playing through the sequel. Played the first one. Uh, enjoyed the first one. Didn't like get super attached to the characters and stuff. It wasn't my favorite, you know. But I did definitely love, uh, you know, just like the atmosphere and the the acting and everything in the game. Um, but yeah, the, the second one right. I'm playing through right now, and uh, I'll save you know more of my thoughts for later. But I'm I'm having a good time, um, you know, as far as murderous you know things go. Like I enjoy all the <laughs> killing, I guess. Um, you enjoy all the killing. Yeah, uh, like I said, I'm I'm about uh, I was about two dogs deep in the game. You know, that's that's like a significant <laughs> part. Um, but yeah, for me so far, it's just been a really good stealth game. Um, but yeah, that, that's where I'm standing right now. I haven't beaten it or gotten to any of the huge story beats yet. But uh, yeah, I'm having a good time. The uh, the sound design alone is something worth just like experiencing the game for, like the the snow and uh, just the the glass breaking. I don't know if you've seen the videos of that, but it's next level what they did with like recording. For for the game, they use like super dynamic, ultra uh, frequency range microphones to get some of those sounds for stuff. So, wow, seems like nobody really has any uh, qualms about the technical aspects of the game. It's it's absolutely on a technical level. It's definitely a marvel for sure. Yeah. So sure, you know, if only games were just that. If they were just judged based on how technically proficiently they were made. I don't think we would be doing this podcast. I haven't played two. I did play one, but I kind of took the... And did you finish it? I took the lazy... Yeah, I finished the first one, and then I took the, the lazy man's way out and watched all the cutscenes for the second one online. Days, what about you? So I ended up playing the first one on the remastered edition. I got it for free with my PlayStation 4. Um, nice. I'm sort of in fingers this bucket where I, I completely understand why folks think it's fantastic. It gets the best game ever. I thought it was great from a stealth perspective, but it didn't change my life. I am currently in team wait for this all to ride over so I can get this game for cheap. But I have watched the cutscenes like Nitroid. And I have a lot of thoughts about it in sort of the greater context of, you know, writing and tropes as well as comparing it to, you know, the subject matter of this podcast, which is Metal Gear. Right. So. Yeah, and that's that's uh, why I've been following this game. I haven't played it. I had never intended to play it. I was a fan of the first game, but I'm following this sequel because it's clear to me that, like, this is the, the divergent point. And then, you know, five years, five to ten years down the line – the future of the video game industry is going to trace some of its some of its future lineage back to this date and 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 publishers are going to be looking at the last of us 2 for influence whether that's good or bad they're going to say like you know we want to make our version of the last of us 2 or if they're going to say you know we, we want to avoid a last of us 2 situation that's why i have been following the the you know all the news stories and the controversy around this game I've seen some conversation online about um, about that, and specifically, it seems to be geared towards this sentiment of maybe games, maybe AAA games have gotten too big, and right. that they need to be scaled down because you have all these concerns about budgets and crunch and you know release timetables, and so The Last of Us Two kind of seems like the ultimate manifestation of that problem. And now everyone's exactly. kind of going, well, you know, maybe it's time to start throttling back a bit and working on smaller projects or at least figuring out a new way of going about this sort of design. Yeah, definitely. And I've been saying that since the PS3 days. And they say uh, game development budgets have doubled since 
the uh, the seventh console generation, and they say they're going to double again. And so you, now you're seeing a lot of pushback from that, and and people are they're trying to spend less money at, to make a smaller game, which is which I think is great. Yeah, and I thought I was going to be like more like almost done with the game, but apparently I'm not even halfway through it yet. So like, yeah, these games are just getting a little too long just for what they need to be. Right. They're trying to make them these huge epic long things. And, you know, you can, you can make DLC or make the, what was the other, the last of us, like little standalone episode, you know, like they can left behind. Yeah. Yeah. They can do things like that to add onto the story, but like the, the huge, you know, singular project doesn't need to be that big and take this long to make. That's a big problem. Speaking from a sustainability standpoint, it is hard from a creative perspective because, you know, you spend all these resources, time and effort to create this game. And when you take the creative risk that games like The Last of Us 2 take, it kind of worries stakeholders and fans in a sense that, you know, we waited seven years and how many millions for this? Yeah, I remember I finished the first Last of Us in about 13 hours. And most people say it's it takes about 15 on average and people are saying that The Last of Us 2, the average completion time is 25 hours, uh, which it doesn't make a lot of sense why they would nearly double the, the length of the game, especially when they they purposefully set out to, and we haven't gotten into spoilers late yet, but I, I feel like we should have some sort of marker when we do dive into spoilers. Yeah. But, you know, the, spe- the, the route that they decided to take where you kind of you go on this side story for essentially it's the it's the length of time that it takes to complete the entire first game where they do something that was obviously going to make a lot of people upset and it's like they intended to do that like they were manipulating people just so that they would feel angry and upset at what they were doing and it it it's it doesn't make a lot of sense to me so part of the reason I didn't play the second one And I worry that by saying anything negative about this game, it's immediately going to be perceived as a political statement because people can only seem to think in those mindsets now, which is really kind of irritating. You can't just like or dislike something on its own merits. You got to be on a team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know. And that's why we have all these disclaimers, by the way. So we can say, you know, we're we're discussing this in full good faith as Metal Gear podcasters. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but to be completely honest, I didn't care for the first one that much. I just right. thought it was an average action game with an average story. I wasn't really all that taken in by it. And I understand that a lot of people really love that game and love those characters and that story and that world. And great. It just didn't resonate with me so that, you know, when the second one comes out and it becomes this huge controversy, I just I kind of don't get it because I didn't think the first one was worth all that much fanfare to begin with. And you kind of just Good don't point. care. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's it's just another game to me. Yeah, it, it really seemed like it was uh, just a lot of knee-jerk stuff at first. You know, you had the you had the meme boys come through, and I, I think, like, the, the worst <laughs> thing is, like, the leaks. Like, when those come out and people are, like, they, like, skim through it, and and then, like, watching just the cutscenes, like damn it, that's not a way to experience a game like, or, or, to, or to pick up anything from it. You know what I mean? Like, If you were to just watch the Metal Gear cutscenes, you'd be like, what the fuck? Like, it's the, you have to at least watch a, a compilation of gameplay that connects those cutscenes. Otherwise, you're just lost. You're like, oh, okay, we're here now. And yeah, <laughs> it felt like... And that's fair, you know? That's, yeah. that's why any opinion I have on the second one, you know, take it with a grain of salt because I didn't play through the second one. I did watch the cutscenes, and yeah. that's not the full experience. So, and that's not so much know. on you. It's just more on like on the community when they when people do that type of stuff and then just like run with the memes. And like, of course, I enjoyed all those memes. They were great. Yeah. But when it comes down to like people are like, oh, I'm not gonna play this game now. It's got a sex scene in it. Oh, this, this chick's kind of muscular, and it's like all these like weird <laughs> uh, non facts started going on. Like like the Neil Druckmann self inserted himself in that scene and it's like yeah. first of all no uh, and then there was you know the whole uh, Abby was a trans person and it was like okay but th- th- that's not even the case you know it's like that's, that was right. a whole other character so then so then those two things connected and then it's now Neil Druckmann self inserted himself into a sex scene where he's banging a trans character it's just like what the fuck 
And like that, so you know like what that it seems came like? From like the whole, you know, when people first released that whole scene and people ran with it, and that's what you know all those memes came from. And it's you just know what like, it seems wow. like are it seems like two sides of a dumb argument constantly straw manning one another. Yeah, and it's it somehow turns into a game of telephone. Hmm. I love telephone. And so that's how you get all the all the weird interpretations and rumors. People straw manning on the internet. Right. <laughs> and it's just like the Ray Liotta meme, like where he's just like cackling laughing. <laughs> you know, that's pretty much like how everybody is behind all of it. You know, it's just like, damn it, we're hurting game sales. I, I don't like this. You know, it's like then you've got all these people like, I'm not even going to play it because it's got that one part in it. And it's like <sighs> that one part's not even a thing that you think it is. I don't know. It's just yeah. getting a little ridiculous and on that aspect. None of that has anything to do with why I'm not interested exactly. in Exactly, yeah. And that's the thing I said. I know that's not against you, but it's just like this the the meme culture of it is just like, ah, oh, god damn it, fellas. Like So before we <laughs> before we continue, um, I do think that we 